cleaning underneath the throat plate of any sewing machine is going to make all the difference in the world. We talk about cleaning a machine whenever you've gone through three to five bobbins worth of thread. That's an easier way to know how much you've actually sewn versus like I've sewn for eight hours or I sew it all day. Well, I can sew all day but not use a bobbin because so much of sewing is the prep. So let me show you how I'm going to get in clean this out and all the steps it takes to do it correctly. If you find your machine is skipping stitches, it's breaking threads, number one, change a needle. Number two, clean the machine. Or if you just do it at the same time, trust me, your machine is gonna be much healthier. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and I'm gonna snip the thread up at the spool. Then I'm gonna pull the whole thread out the needle. This way I'm not bringing up any lint that I might have gathered up in this area and sending it up and into the machine. Next, I like to take off the presser foot. So just push the button in the back to drop the foot off. And now that needle is kind of sticking out at me. So you can use the screwdriver. There's a long one or a short one that you can use. Slide that needle out. And now use that short screwdriver to get the screws loosened. Now the first time you do this, they are probably tighter than normal. So once you get them kind of loosened, you don't have to get them this tight, but that's what the short screwdriver is for, is to get in here and kind of get underneath the head of the machine. Before I get this all the way off, let's go ahead and remove the bobbin. Now the first thing that you wanna be careful of is that you don't want to blow into this machine. You want to, if there's lint or anything, you wanna actually suck it out. So whether that's using the brush, using a Q-tip, using a vacuum cleaner, just repeat after me, no canned air. Don't blow anything else into here. So after the plate comes off, there's one more piece that you take out. And this is the bobbin case. So you might have to give it a little bit of a wiggle to get it to kind of come out from underneath its, um, all the pieces kind of holding it in. And I'm gonna show you the proper way to get that back into place. But you'll notice that down in the middle of the bobbin case is a big hole, and it sits directly over the center of the hook area. Now down in there, it might look like there's a little bit of lint, there's not, but you need to purchase a little bottle of soy machine oil. Put a couple drops of oil in there and that will actually keep this machine running smooth. So if you did that every time you cleaned, trust me, this machine is gonna sound wonderful. So linty fabrics come in all sorts, like so from fleeces to flannels, even denims, it's gonna all gather up here. So just make sure you get all the lint out from underneath it as possible. If you're sewing on batting, you're gonna see that that's gonna really add a lot. If you're using linty thread, same thing, it's just gonna all gather in. So let me show you the trick on putting your bobbin case back. So down at the bottom, you see this little nub, and right here, you see this little spring. I'm kind of pushing my finger up against it. You wanna point the two pieces of the bobbin case towards the back of the machine. And as you lower that in there, you're watching that when it finally sits nice and flush into this whole area, you know it's correct. And then that little heel bounces up against the spring. If it's there, that's good. You can easily actually, well, not easily. I don't know how people do it, but you can actually get this spun and in this way over here. So that's what I always tell my students is look for that little guy, should have a little bounce, little wiggle, and you know you're good to go. Again, you can see that hole that I pointed out for where to oil, even without taking this whole entire part off. Take your throat plate, slide this part even underneath the machine housing, and then put the screws back in. You're gonna notice the last thing I absolutely do is put my needle in. Attach the foot. Replace your bobbin. Thread the machine. And remember the little tool that you found in your bonus pack of feet? This little multi-purpose tool has a hole in it. Drop your needle down into the hole so the flat side stays to the back and you can use this to assist getting it as high into the machine as possible. So if you have trouble getting your hands in there, you can lift it all the way up, hold it, and then gently tighten the screw. Now let me talk about this screw. So, and I said gently. So you wanna tighten it so it's, it's 
it won't fall out. And number two though, if you go too tight, you can actually eventually break that item. So you need to find that happy medium, like tight enough so the needle doesn't remove, fall out, and then, um, but not over tightened. Next, lower down the presser foot, use the needle threader to thread the needle, and it's a way to check to make sure you got the needle all the way up at the highest position. And then we're gonna bring up our bobbin thread by touching the needle down button two times. Bring up that loop of thread. That's the bobbin thread. And cover it up. Test it and make sure that the machine is threaded correctly. And if it is, it will sew nice and smooth. Now let's talk about the rest of your cleaning options. So we talked about every three to five bobbins with this machine, but after a year of sewing, you're gonna find that it will start to probably request a full service. So your local sewing machine stores can assist with this. Have them do a full service on this machine once a year is a good idea. Then that way it can stay nice and healthy on the inside much further than what you and I do on a regular basis.